We've been in a series called Leap of Faith. <laughs> Leap of Faith, and I'm going to title today, Leave It Alone. Leave it alone. When I said that, what was one of the first things that came to your mind? People pleasing. Keep your doggone mouth shut. What else? When I said leave it alone, what was the first thing that dropped in your spirit? Stay in your own lane. My job. What else? Worry. It's not in your doggone control. Leave it alone. That thing that you've been beating your head against the wall. And nothing's changing. Leave it alone. But how? Is that what y'all said to me just now? How many of you said, but how? Come on, what happens in Limitless stays in Limitless. You said, but how? You leave it alone. Every time you want to get your flesh involved, you tell your flesh to sit down and shut up. The Bible says to renew your mind because out of it flows. Renew your mind. And then Proverbs 4.23 says to guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. So Psalms 46 and 10 says what? I'm so proud of my inner circle. I'm making them learn memory verses. Psalms 46 and 10 says... Be still and know that I am God. So anytime there is ever any anxiety, how many struggle with anxiety attacks? It's because you are a control freak. Controlling people do not trust God. How many controlling people we got up in here? It's okay. It's hard to not control, right? Why? Because a lot of times it's our history. So we have been let down. Somebody has promised us something they didn't follow through. We found ourselves stuck like Chuck because of someone else's actions. So now we're angry and we're controlling, which is both a sin. Because if the enemy cannot take you out, he wears you out with what? He makes you feel incapable. He makes you feel like you're not where you should be. How many of you feel like you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now in your life? You love your place. I'm so I'm so proud. Usually every church I go to, there's not one single person that lifts their hands. Do you know why you're not happy with where you are? Because you had expectations of where you thought you were supposed to be and you ain't there yet. But can I tell you, you are exactly where you're supposed to be or you wouldn't be there. So what the enemy does is the enemy starts making you try to figure out, you get in fight mode. Which is comparison. You go back to school. Y'all owe $450,000 to Sally Mae. Trying to figure life out. You still ain't making not a dime. Because inside of us, we have this culture that is telling us in society that a certain age of our lives, we're supposed to have four kids, a labradoodle, it should be orange, bred just right, the most beautiful house sitting up on a hill, the greatest marriage on the planet. Yes, you better. You better take care of that too. And if we don't, and if we failed a little bit, then we get in a propensity to fight mode. So what the enemy does is he does not want you to succeed even in your glow up. In peace. I'm going to fight, 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 fight so I don't enjoy nothing, 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 nothing. I'm moving, I'm climbing, but every time I get to another level, I'm still not happy, so I'm fighting, 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 so I'm not even enjoying the ride. This is what makes you reach for addiction. This is what makes you need to clap back. Anybody you ever see on social media that is clapping back is miserable. When your first instinct is to defend yourself and prove a point, you are not where you need to be with God. Because when you are settled in your spirit and you have learned to leave it alone, you realize that I will not get shaken. 
I did not build this house on sand. I am built by the word of God, the word of my testimony. And if I'm not where I think I should be, I am where God thinks I should be. So instead of praying for God to get me out of this situation, I'm going to pray for God to help me learn what I'm supposed to learn in this situation. So I never go back to this situation and I elevate, leave it alone. And today my prayer over all of you, a lot of you are going back. How many of y'all leaving today to go back to your places? My prayer is that you have a spirit of release. That you stop giving CPR to dead situations. That you stop being petty. That you stop giving your attention to people, places, and seasons that are done. You can have all the riches in the world. You can have the greatest house with an MTV Cribs with the greatest juices and protein. But if you ain't got no appetite because you ain't got no peace because you don't know how to let it go. You can have the biggest house on the planet, 10,000 square feet with the greatest man cave and pool. But if you ain't got no friends... You can have all the money in the world, but if you ain't got no Jesus, that is your peace giver. Money don't bring you happiness. Relationship don't bring you happiness. A better job isn't going to bring you happiness. But learning to let things go when they need to go and let God be God is where the... Listen to what Matthew 13, 24 and 30 says. It says the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that, I'm trying to read that back there and I can't no more read it than the man in the moon. Like it don't move with me. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field But that night, as the worker slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat. Then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. So just because you have decided to make a change doesn't mean there's not going to still be some weeds over here. But you keep getting distracted by the weeds. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? And the enemy has done this. The farmer explained, Should we pull up the weeds? Because what do you want to do when things ain't going right? You want to step in and you want to be God and you want to erect and make decisions on temporary emotions. What should we do? Should we we pull up the weeds? They asked. No. He replied, because you'll uproot the wheat. If you do, if you keep getting ahead of me, you're going to miss the teaching that I have in the season where you think I've forgotten about you. I hated the seasons of growth. I still hate it. I hate when I've been traveling for a minute and I ain't been to the gym in a month and I walk back in there and I'm doing push-ups and I see the little cottage cheese. I get so mad because I feel like That because I had to work and travel that I missed out on this part and I feel like I lost a little. But what I discovered about working out is that when you go back within 24 hours, it's called muscle. And the next day when I look in the mirror, my muscles are back. I missed a month, but I went back a day. But the problem is you get stuck on the cottage cheese. You get stuck on the tooth. And then your reach seems so far out of reach that you lose your way. And the thing you want to do is immediately start pulling everything and trying to get the weeds. And God is saying, no, 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 no. Slow 
and easy. You don't got to have all the answers right this minute. The problem with you is, and the problem with our society is, we want a crock pot. Crock pots weren't fast enough, so we got Instapots. Now Instapots ain't quick enough, so we got air fryers. Air fryers weren't quick enough, so now we have air ovens. Now when we can't order something on Prime and it's there within the next morning at 11 a.m., we cancel the order. And so what we do with our walk with God is we forget that with every ounce of growth, there comes a season of preparation. Everything takes time. You cook a cake. Take it out early, Teddy. The outside edges look crispy, but the inside is doughy. Because you lost focus when you saw it getting around the edges. So you got ahead of yourself, and now it tastes gross because it's still not cooked on the inside. So our outside looks like we fit. We got it going on. We struggled in that relationship forever and our heart was broken forever. And then all of a sudden we start feeling ourselves feeling a little bit better. About six months later, we like, whoo, I just saw him when he picked up my kids. And I'm like, boy, bye. Like, I can't even remember you naked. I am healed. So then you put yourself out there to get in another relationship when you ain't no more ready than the man in the moon because timing. Then you end up in relationships with the same people with different faces. Then we blame God. If he's so great, why ain't he coming through for me? Because he's saving you. Because you ain't ready. He's not punishing you. He's saving you. He's like, I don't want to just bring it into your life yet because you're praying for it, but you ain't preparing for it. You know how I know? Because every single time something comes your way, you fall apart. God's like, how can I trust you with a man or a woman, like a wife or a husband, when you can't even hold it together when your soup don't heat up right? How can I trust you with a spouse when you don't even pray for yourself? Y'all going to get together and kill each other. So I'm saving you until you get your tail together. What does that mean? Me looking in the mirror. and saying there's weeds all around that I don't like. But instead of running, I'm going to face it. Flat-footed. I'm not going to abort this mission. 2024 is my year to soar. So I will stand in this mirror and I will fight every demon, every word curse, every generational curse. But the one thing I will not do is get up and allow the weeds in my life to get me distracted. Leave it alone. Listen to what the end of that chapter said. The script, the trip, uh, uh, a text says. It says, should we pull up the weeds? No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. You had to go through it. You had to lose it. But it's up to you to let go now. Because the pain is working for your purpose. You gotta stop hearing what your daddy said about you. And start using what he said about you as ammunition 
understanding that the enemy does not fight you because you're weak. He fights you because you're strong. And he knows that you're going to be sitting in Limitless in January 2024. And you're going to have an understanding of something God had been telling you forever. And all of a sudden, it was going to hit you like a ton of bricks. Why? Why didn't I get it a month ago, Kim? Why didn't I get it two months ago, Kim? Because it wasn't timing. Timing is everything. If you get ahead of God, you will mess up something important. You can have the right conversation with your spouse at the wrong time and mess up everything. God didn't say you couldn't do it. He just said timing. How do you know when timing is right? How do you know? Anybody have problems with understanding when and how? Anybody? I'm just not sure, Kim. I'm just not really sure if it's God. I'm not really sure if it's God. You get on your knees and you begin to pray and you say, God, I need to know what to do with this situation. And the first thing that drops in your spirit is God. It's not that hard. Because he's already built you to make it through everything. It's in you. He doesn't let you come to it without giving you what you need to get through it because he is a good good father but you have these expectations of how your mama did it your auntie did it your ex did it and so you got this idea of how it's supposed to be but baby you are the trailblazer it is not gonna look like man it says Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds. Tie them into bundles and burn them and put the wheat in the barn. Do you know what's so cool about God? Is you're wearing yourself out trying to do it all in your own strength. And God is saying, I'm building a team. I'm building an army to help you navigate through it. You're not even going to have to put in all the work. The reason you're so tired right now is because you're ahead of me. And it ain't time yet. Because when it gets time, I will make a way out of no way. He said, in my presence, I will melt mountains like wax. But the problem is you don't need to spend time with God no more. Because now you're mad at God because you're still stuck over here on stupid. Because it didn't work out the way you wanted it to work out. He said, no, 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 no. It's working out exactly like I wanted it to work out. And I'm the kind of God that when you get in position, I will open the windows of heaven and use the time that you have left. Leave it alone. The power of doing nothing when you want to do everything. The power of resting. The power of looking at yourself in the mirror and telling yourself to be quiet. Why you got to overthink everything? Why? Do you got to knock four times? Turn the knob four times. Blink your eye three times. Why do you only think you're loved if they're toxic? Why in your heart are you still single at 50? Because you're so afraid of turning out like your parents. That you're missing out on God using you to break the lineage of toxic. Because he's a good, good father. But we won't let go of the weeds. We see the weeds. Put my picture up there, Manson. The battle belongs to God, not you. Listen to this. The best things in life take time. 
But see, social media's got us thinking by looking at people's profiles that they just come up on all, all of a sudden. Just, oh my God, they just showed up over. No, God does not do things quick. So every time you think it's a one-hit wonder, they've been going for about 20 years all by themselves, hustling. Do you hear me? I watch Apostle Ramon. He does more live videos than anybody I've ever seen in my life. Why? Consistency. It's putting in the work. It's saying, God, I'm going to read all the books I can so that I'm prepared for this next level. Whatever situation I'm going through, I'm going to help myself navigate through it by reading books, listening to podcasts, getting in the word of God. Because I know when God opens the windows of heaven over my life, I will be able to decipher between weeds and wheat. Listen to this. Do you have seed in the ground? Do you have seed in the ground if you do guess what and all of you do you reap your harvest you will get back everything the devil has stolen from you plus tax but you can't get it because you can't see out of the weeds Seeds grow down, then up. I always tell people this when they say, man, I just feel stuck. I said, no, you're a seed. They did this. They did that to me. No, they didn't realize that when they buried you, that you are a seed. When you plant a harvest, it doesn't grow overnight. It takes time. You are not behind. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. And the minute you understand it, you got ammunition. When you really realize that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be and I'm coming up out of this thing and I'm going to be a trailblazer. Seeds grow down and then up. While your seed is in process, It won't be exempt from the presence of bad. But the enemy cannot curse what God has blessed. You're blessed. You wouldn't be in this house if you weren't blessed. And I know how hard it is. Put my picture back up there. I ain't talked about it yet. Here's some things that you got to stand firm on. Listen to this. Ecclesiastes 3, 2. You ready for this? There's a time to be born. A time to plant. There's a time to harvest. A time to kill. And a time to heal. A time to tear down. And a time to build up. There's a time to cry. A time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. What is it saying? It's saying there's going to be seasons of ebb and flow. They're necessary. It's like when you're pregnant. The first month is the hardest month ever. You're throwing up everywhere. You're having these saltines, but there's no proof that something's growing. You ain't got, you even walking like this. You put maternity clothes on. You even want to put an arrow that says, I'm pregnant. You can't fit in your clothes anymore. You're in this awkward season. It's the first few trimesters that are the most important in your life when you don't feel like nothing's happening. That's when the weeds start growing up. Because your mind starts going crazy. Yo, I, I, I have to wear bifocals now because I'm 51. So I bought these bifocals off of Amazon. They were cute. 2.0. See brilliantly. I was ready for some cuter bifocals. So I went and bought 2.0 in these fabulous glasses. Could not wait to get them. You get excited about bifocals when you get older. 
I can't see nothing without bifocals close. I've had LASIK, but you still don't fix that vision up close. It's the craziest thing ever. I get these glasses 2.0, which is what I always wear. I put them on and it was like, ah, I couldn't see anything. If I would have kept those glasses because that's what my prescription has always been and tried to force my eyes to see through the 2.0 because that's what I've always worn. I would have walked around feeling discombobulated, but I, this is what I wear, so I'm staying with these. Just because something has worked in the past the way it has does not mean that the same prescription just because the friends used to work then does not mean they're going to work in this season just because that job paid the bills then does not mean that it's going to work now there's a season listen to this here's some things that need to be broken down this morning from this text Stop letting the weeds distract you. It is naive to think the planting of good exempts us from the presence of bad. It's crazy that you're shocked when the devils, when your kids start acting up, when your marriage starts having some friction, when you start feeling bad in your body, when you're doing a retreat, The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But you got to be focused. Y'all look at this. On this picture, the weeds are easy to see. Easy. But the wheat and the tear look similar. Here's the deal. As you grow your wheat, the more you keep growing, The more you keep staying stable, the more you stop getting distracted by everything on the planet sent to steal, kill, and destroy. Eventually, the wheat is so thick from staying focused that the tear stays up and the wheat is so full, it falls over. What happens is, You are the wheat. So as you're growing and being fulfilled in God, you're going to start noticing that tear is having to be removed because now it's being separated. This is why timing is so important. So my question to you today is, did you quit on God because you were doing so much good and the bad hit? And now you're focused on the bad instead of the good. Here's number two. Whenever there is great potential for harvest, the enemy earmarks it with calamity. You're doing so good. Your marriage has been so great. And then all of a sudden, bam! Your finances were blowing up. Now you've got all kinds of red in your bank account. If the calamity starts taking over your peace, you are not spending enough time with God. I'm teaching you in this church and in the inner circle that you've got to know how to get down on your knees. You don't just lay in your bed and pray. You get down on your knees and you begin to pray. And if you ain't got nothing to pray, you begin to say, way maker. You're a miracle worker. You're a promise keeper. And you stay down on your knees praying over every situation in your life that is troubling you. Not once. You pray until things change. You quit praying. You got weary. And the enemy is laughing his butt off. 
because he's quarantined in hell. If the enemy can talk half of the angels out of heaven, don't you think he can talk you out of your miracle? He don't even got to be present. He just starts playing in your mind. You're behind, you're behind, you're behind, you're slow, you're slow. Keep taking medicine to people that like to be sick. Keep giving all your attention to that one person that ain't never going to change when there's thousands that you could be touching. So today my question to you is, have you stopped? Because you thought God was just going to keep blessing, bless. Honey, just because you come to know Jesus does not mean everything's going to go great. Guess what? Things weren't going great when you weren't saved. But you just tied one on with some tequila shots. But now that you're going higher, the enemy knows that you've got some power in you. Because the Bible says that once you come to know Jesus, that's a prayer I'm about to say with you. Once you come to know Jesus, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. That means you can walk in your house tonight and begin to shun. You can walk in your car today. He can be acting up and lay hands on your car. Put oil on that situation. Stop putting your mouth on something. You should put oil on stand up on your feet whenever God is about to do something great in your life calamity a car wreck knocks your tooth out a divorce that addiction comes back up and you find yourself back in front of that liquor store. You start yelling divorce again instead of holding hands and fighting, holding hands. You're fighting each other with fist. One will put a thousand to flight. Two will put 10,000 to flight. That's why he doesn't want you in relationships. Anytime God is going to do anything miraculous in your life, he does it through relationships. Are your weeds your toxic friends? God removed that person out of your life and you're still letting them run your life. Just because you divorce somebody don't mean they don't still run your world. Because your mind is so bitter, full of unforgiveness. In this room today, I want you to ask yourself, what do I need to forgive? Who is holding me hostage? A lot of times it's you. I went on a trip and I get my yard, I got my yard taken care of. I mean, it was spectacular because I am orderly. I like things in order. I came home three days later and there were so many weeds in my yard that I was like, what in the world is going on? And it made me feel a little anxiety like, how did this even happen? Because I'm taking care of my yard. How did this even break through? And I remember my yard lady said to me, she said, oh, this is nothing. It's easy. Because when you maintain, you see any little weed. And all we got to do now is go on those spots and kill it. The problem is when you sleep on yourself, because you're depressed, anxious, and you don't like to confront. You don't like confrontation. Then before you know it, there's weeds everywhere. And when you get weeds everywhere, it's easy to let it just go because you don't even know where to start. But today, I'm calling you back. You gotta get back into position. Slow and easy no is a complete sentence 
this year we're not stopping to explain things to people that know very well what they did I'm not going to explain to you anymore because you know why you are not speaking to me anymore so I love you but I love you from up there and I still want you to eat I'll even send you some Uber Eats but you can't sit at my table anymore because you're causing weeds you're pulling me away from God I want you so bad you so fine but you're pulling me away from God I'm gonna just take a break I'm not even saying that we gotta like call it quits but we gonna take a break And if you really want this, I need you to get your weeds taken care of too. Because when the enemy can't get to me, he'll get to you to get to me. And I can't be scared anymore. God is busting that fear off of you today. Limitless, we will not be chickens. We are eagles. We're going to stop forcing things to open when it's still our marinating season. If I would have gotten ahead of God, I would never be doing what I'm doing today. If I would have never had to go work at Bloomingdale's, I would never be loving little thumbnails all over the world as my favorite hobby. I would never be pastoring, I think, the greatest church in America with a huge online campus. God uses seasons to prepare you for elevation. Last year when I sold my house, I would have never stayed in Fayetteville and believed God like I believed for a high rise downtown. But I had to believe God for big because everything's expensive. So it stretched me. If I would have never stepped out on fear, because you're still going to be scared, but you got to do it scared. What does that mean? You're saying don't get ahead of God, Kim, and now you're saying do it scared. No, 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 no. There's a difference. You understand when you're hearing God. This is why you got to be careful of the noise that you're listening to. If I would have never moved downtown, I would have never heightened my, my quota, my vision. I'd have never met low. I would have never started working out. And now, I'm looking at big old houses down in Fayetteville that I would have never looked at if I wouldn't have moved there. So what God does in every season is it's for elevation. He will use every season that you feel like even you're going backwards. He's really getting you prepared to think bigger. Because your mentality over here in Lodabar and in the wilderness and around your family is keeping you small-minded. But the minute you start stepping out, you can't just tiptoe either. It's going to be like jumping and the leap of faith. So don't detest the car being broke down on the side of the road. Don't detest that job that you can't stand. Don't detest you having to start all over again. God is working all things together for your good. Romans 8, 28. Here's what I want you to do. You mark my words. You ain't seen nothing yet. God is waiting on you. You're not behind. You're not too late. I didn't preach my first sermon until I was 41. I'm 51. I've written five books with my special ed self. 
Don't you tell me it ain't. My daddy wasn't famous. Nobody put me on a platform and got me notoriety. It was called consistency and me learning when weeds were there and when wheat was there and when tear was there. And I began to get in the spirit and talk to God so he can navigate me. If you're in this room and you said, I have, I have walked away from God. got to know who God is y'all online you got to know who God is God helps lead you he gives you strength when you want to suffocate you got to know who God is there is a heaven and there is a hell hell is hot and the devil gets us so used to it they say man Jesus is coming back Jesus, well, my grandpa used to tell me Jesus come back. He's dead 20 years now. So what the enemy does is he gets you hardened. What I discovered was, Kimberly, get your heart right. And when you get your heart right, everything else falls into place. What does that mean? I forgive you. Even when you never tell me you're sorry. I forgive you for lying on me, talking about me, not being there for me, walking out on me as a dad, walking out on me as a mom, walking out on me as a husband that said you would have my back, walking out on me when you said you would be my ride or die and you ain't you still here, but you ain't riding. If you're in this room today, you got to know who Jesus is. He's your strength. Because you're going to go through the weeds. But when you know who Jesus is, you don't get distracted. You allow the growth. If you're in this place today and you say, Kim, I've walked away from God. Or I don't know that I ever had God. I need you to lift your hand up. If you say, Kimberly, I want this. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. Lift up your hand. I want it. Listen, you don't come to know Jesus when you get it right. You come to know Jesus so you can. Listen, you come to know Jesus so he can help you get it right. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. If that's you, lift up your hand. The tears are normal. Tears are normal.